So uh, let's say we want to um, have a pointer, I like the imp, but to be able to point at other things in the scene, uh, just like uh, just like you would really in edit mode. So now it's aiming at the imp tip. Cool. So now we have that that's hitting, going to hit down there. So let's have that actually do something. Uh, we'll have it emit an object, and we'll emit that at the position that the laser is at. So we'll get an emitter here. Don't need the grid. And we'll tell it, we'll give it a short time between emits. Uh, max emitted, we'll give it a short lifetime as well. So the emitter takes a scene space transform. Uh, so we can make one by using a combiner. A scene space transform is a type of fat wire. So now we've got a scene space transform, we can plug that into there. And you see it's a fat wire with all like braided uh, little wires going through it. Um, but we want to set the translation, which is effectively the um, position in the scene, based on the hit position. So now wherever that laser hits, it will um, it will emit a thing at that position. Oh, we haven't linked it to anything. So let's link it to the painting. Right. And it works. So now we have that position in the world and we can emit stuff to it or we can um, use a follower to move uh, some other, other object to it. So if we grab that, Uh, we don't need those, and we can have a a follower, and this one takes just a target position, so this doesn't even need that that thing. We can wire that straight, uh, wire the uh, hit position straight into the target position, and now it'll move towards that position and it's like trying to get to the point where the imp is pointing at. However, if you point somewhere uh, that it's not, the laser scope isn't hitting anything, now it's moving back to its like original uh, zero, zero in the world position. If you look at the um, floor and move that out of the way, that's actually the center of the whole scene at zero, zero, zero position. And that's what it will default to when it's not actually hit anything. Um, so perhaps, um, perhaps instead of that, like this might be in a different position entirely. Let's just move that whole thing over here. So this might be over here on like maybe there's a puzzle area or something. But then you do that, and then it starts wandering over there. Um, so instead of that. We could do this a different way. We could use a tag, and I'll just stick it on the floor for now, make it nice and big. And um, we will just stick it into a node over here. So we'll get the scene space transform from that tag, which is its position and scale and rotation in the world. And then we can split it out to get just the uh, translational position and wire that into there. You don't need that. So now we're saying um, use that tag, uh, that tag's position as a default. Um, but while this is this has a hit something, then we'll follow where it's hit and use a selector. So if we wire the um, Always forget where it is. Hit something. So while it's hit something, we'll send that to the active port. While it's hit something, it will send a 1, and it will go to the number 1 port, which is B. And while it hasn't hit something, it will be on port A, um, and send stuff out from those ports. Um, so what we can do is use the pass-through mode, which means the stuff that is the, the value it's receiving in that channel 
will be sent out the other side while that channel is active. So now we're going through that. So while uh, it's not hitting anything, then this value will go through. I uh, will use a port actually, make us tidy. The, uh, the tags position will go through and come out into the port. Otherwise, we'll use the laser scopes position. So use the hit position into port B, and that goes into the port. So either way, this port will have the hit position or the tag position. And then we'll wire that straight into the follower. Let's see how that works. Uh, we'll move it over again so it's closer. So it's following our imp pointer position. And then when we look over there, it's kind of gone back to the side. So maybe maybe this goes to the bottom corner or something like that. So it just like resets to over there. Uh, but while you're using it, it will follow and then it will reset to over there, something like that. Um, but if this was an actual game, you'd probably have um, uh, other cubes, <laughs> all cubes all the time. So uh, say this is a, a target and maybe you have a health modifier on it. And when it goes down, we can say it glows red. And powers down like that. Um, and this will actually let's admit that when you um, when you press R two to fire or something like that. Yep, and that will be off unless the controller sensor has R two greater than some threshold and then we'll turn it on with a keyframe. We can add a health modifier over here or a trigger zone or whatever you want to do but then this is off um, until this is pulled and then it's on. So it'll do damage when you pull the right trigger. So now each time we press R2, it gets hit. If we make it more obvious, make it green, and it will flash red. Yeah, there we go. So it's getting hit while we're aiming at it, sort of thing. I'd like to thank Martinity DK, Ascendant Lizard, Dead MC, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Thanks for watching. If you'd like me to continue making these tutorials and helping creators across the internet, you can find out how to support me in the link in the description. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.